Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rosie and today I want to talk to you about the killing fields and a prison in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. So we were there a couple of weeks ago now and I've actually forgotten most of the information about, you know, very specific things like how many people were detained, how many people were murdered, like how, everything that happened. So what I've done is I've asked ChatGPT um, some information that I'm going to talk to you about, kind of the information that is given to me on there. And then I'm going to share my experience as well. So we actually went to the prison first. Um, it was formerly a school, it then got turned into a prison and then now it's a museum. We went there first on one of the days and then a couple of days later we went to the killing fields to experience that as well. So I'm going to talk to you about the prison first and then I'll talk to you about the killing fields afterwards. So I'm just going to read from ChatGPT. So it says Tuol Sleng Prison, which is the prison that we went to, also known as S21, was a former high school in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, that was converted into a notorious prison and torture centre during the rule of the Khmer Rouge regime. The prison was used to detain and interrogate perceived enemies of the state, and it is estimated that as many as 20,000 prisoners passed through its doors between 1975 and 1979. At Tuol Sleng, prisoners were subjected to brutal and inhumane treatments, including beatings, electrocution and waterboarding, Many were also forced to confess to crimes they did not commit, and many did not survive their detention. The prison was discovered by Vietnamese forces in 1979 after the fall of the Khmer Rouge, and it has since been preserved as a museum and memorial to the victims of the genocide. The Tuol Sleng Museum is a powerful reminder of the horrific acts committed during the genocide, and it serves as a testament to the resilience of the Cambodian people. Visitors to the museum can tour the prison cells, see photographic displays of former prisoners, and learn about the history of the Khmer Rouge regime and the atrocities it committed. The museum is a sobering and emotional experience, but it is also an important part of the Cambodia's recent history and a necessary reminder of the importance of promoting human rights and preventing such atrocities from happening again. And then I asked another question. It says, it is estimated that between 14,000 and 20,000 people were detained at Tuol Sleng Prison, also known as S21, during the rule of the Khmer Rouge regime in Cambodia and that only a handful of prisoners survived their detention. The vast majority of those who were imprisoned at Tuol Sleng were subjected to brutal and inhumane treatment and were either executed or died as a result of the harsh conditions and lack of medical care. The exact number of deaths at Tuol Sleng is not known as the Khmer Rouge regime destroyed many of the records and documentation related to the prison. However, the museum at the Tuol Sleng contains photographic records of many of the prisoners as well as evidence of the methods of torture and execution used by the regime. The tragedy of Tuol Sleng is a poignant reminder of the atrocities committed during the Cambodian genocide and serves as a powerful testament to the resilience and courage of the Cambodian people. The museum is a valuable resource for those seeking to learn about the history of the genocide and its aftermath and provides an important opportunity for reflection and remembrance. So that's kind of what ChatGPT said and obviously it says that it was 20,000 people passed through within that four year period I think it was between 1975 and 1979 so in four years there was 20,000 people that passed through most of which did not survive and walking through was actually quite harrowing I would say um, definitely get the audio guide I think it's five there's about five euros to get in and it was ten euros to get in and have the audio guide we didn't do it because we didn't think we would need to but actually as you walk around there are, there is some information on the boards but i think you get most of the information via the headset and then by the time we kind of figured that out we'd already done most of the museum so definitely get their headset if you go and do the audio tour um but it was quite shocking to see kind of there was cabinets with schools and you could see how that person had died because of the markings on their skull so maybe there was a bullet hole or maybe there was a big dent or like a big you know someone had been hit on the head or something so there's lots of skulls on display you could also walk through some of the torture rooms and i'm pretty sure you could see blood on the walls and things like that and you could also walk through the like jail cells almost. It was like a big room that obviously used to be a classroom or something that they've divided up with wood and they made tiny little cells that was kind of just big enough to be able to sleep and that was kind of it. And there was also, like it said on the kind of chat GPT thing, there was lots of photographs of the inmates as well. So it was really upsetting. Um, I think doing the audio tour would have been better because you will have gained more information. So I wish I had done that. That's something I definitely would recommend. 
but otherwise it was worth going to see and to learn about and then what happened is a lot of the people either died in prison from the torture that they endured there was also actually in the torture rooms there was also photographs of the bodies because i think the Khmer rouge had to justify because i think it was meant to be prison so if there was if somebody did die at the prison they had to justify why that person died so they'd take photographs of the dead person and obviously all the blood around it and things. There was these photographs on the wall and then the exact bed where that had happened in the room. So that was quite chilling as well to see, to see that. But like I was saying, most of the people that went into the prison did not survive. And then those that did survive were basically sent onto the killing fields, which is what I'm gonna talk about now. Um, so they would be shipped off at three in the morning or something. They were told that they were just going to a different prison, that they were okay, nothing was gonna happen. They'd arrived at these killing fields and get executed. There'd be mass shootings. And for the killing fields, we did get the audio guide. I think it was included in the price, which I think is the best way to be, um, rather than kind of having it as an option. So you do get the audio guide and it was really, really good, really, really fascinating because it kind of walks you through where you arrive at the killing fields, um, what happened to the prisoners, you know, throughout the whole area. Um, let me talk to you about the killing fields on here and then I'll tell you about my experience. So I've put, what are the killing fields in Phnom Penh? The killing fields in Phnom Penh refer to the sites where mass executions and murders took place during the Cambodian genocide, which was carried out by the Khmer Rouge regime from 1975 to 1979. The regime was responsible for the deaths of an estimated 1.5 to 2 million Cambodians through execution, starvation and forced labor. If you've seen the film, First They Killed My Father, that's a really good representation of what happened basically of the Khmer Rouge coming into Phnom Penh and making everybody leave and then it follows the story of a family who go off into the countryside end up working in labor camps and they get separated and it kind of really shows you what happened during the Khmer Rouge regime so I'd recommend watching that first they killed my father I think it's called um, so they died through execution starvation and forced labor the mass killings took place at several sites throughout Cambodia but the most notorious are located in and around Phnom Penh, the capital city. The most well known of these is, I'm going to try and say this correctly, Choung Ek Killing Field, which is now a memorial and museum dedicated to the victims of the genocide. The killing fields are a powerful reminder of the atrocities committed during the genocide and serve as a testament to the resilience and perseverance of the Cambodian people. So then I said, Tell me more about the Choung Ek Killing Fields, and it said, the Chereng Ek Killing Fields is a site located on the outskirts of Phnom Penh, Cambodia. That was one of the many execution sites used during the Cambodian genocide carried out by the Khmer Rouge regime. It is estimated that over 17,000 people were executed and buried at Chereng Ek, many of whom were taken to the site after being held and tortured at the nearby Tuol Sleng prison, also known as S21. After the fall of the Khmer Rouge, the site was discovered and exhumed, revealing mass graves and evidence of the horrific acts that took place there. In 1988, a memorial stupa was built at the site to honour the victims, and it has since become a popular tourist destination and a symbol of the atrocities committed during the genocide. The stupa contains the remains of over 8,000 victims, many of whom were identified by their families and friends, and serves as a powerful reminder of the tragedy that occurred at Chuang Ek. Visitors to the killing field can tour the site and learn about the history of the genocide through informational displays and audio guides. The site is also a peaceful and contemplative space where visitors can pay their respects to the victims and reflect on the lessons of the past. So that's the information I got from ChatGPT. And yeah, it was really, really interesting. Um, like I said, I can't remember all the facts and figures, but the audio guide was really good because it had somebody who um, was actually one of the guards spoke on the audio guide as well and talked about their experience of being one of the kind of people who was working with the Khmer Rouge. There was also um, a story of somebody who had lost her son I believe. I can't remember but it was just really really interesting and it was really interesting to see the site as well and some of the graves. Now I can't remember how many graves there were um, but I, I remember they've only dug up some of the graves and one of them I think the most shocking one for me, one of them was a mass grave and it was full of women and babies and there was a tree next to it and this tree had lots of little bracelets and ribbons and things on it and basically this tree, they from doing research, they found skull and brains on there from babies. So what they understood was that the guards or the 
people doing the killing would take the babies by the legs and ankles. This is, by the way, don't watch this little section if you're, uh, it's triggering. <laughs> but they took the babies by the feet and the legs and smashed the heads against the tree and then chucked them in the grave with their mothers. And I think the mothers were made to watch this happen and then they were shot and killed and all buried together. So it was a mass grave of women and babies, which that one made me cry. It was just shocking and awful. Um, so yeah, it was definitely educational, it's definitely insightful, definitely sad. Um, it's something I would recommend doing if you are in Phnom Penh, just to understand a bit of the history and a bit of what actually happened. And yeah, just to get that information and that kind of knowledge was important, I would say. It was also interesting walking around Cambodia, knowing that anybody above the age of 40 basically survived the Khmer Rouge regime, which wiped out a quarter of the population. So if you see like a 70 year old man walking in the street, you know that they survived this mass genocide, which was really, really interesting. And something else I found, again, I can't remember the numbers, I'll maybe leave it on screen if I remember, if I can find it. But I read somewhere that most of the population in Cambodia is now young because obviously the Khmer Rouge killed a lot of the middle-aged people at the time, which means that there's now not those older people alive and most of the Cambodian population is really young, is below the age of 25 or something. So it's really, really sad, really um, shocking and upsetting, but also really informative and I'm glad we went. I would recommend going. Like I said, definitely get the audio guide for the prison. Um, I don't know if this video was informative or not, if you enjoyed it or not. Um, I didn't take many photographs or videos when I was there at both of these sites because it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right to vlog. It didn't feel right to film a lot of it. I took a couple of snaps here and there just to kind of, for my own memory sake. So I will have put some on screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. A little bit of a different video for me, I know I'm usually a bit more upbeat and happy and talking about fun stuff, but I think it is important to share this side of the Cambodia history and what happened and kind of hopefully shed a little bit of light on it, I don't know. Anyway, if you want to do more research, you can either watch that film that I mentioned, First They Killed My Father, I'm sure there's lots of books talking about it and other films and documentaries and things, so definitely go ahead and do more research. If you do visit Cambodia and Phnom Penh, it's definitely worth doing both of them. I probably would do the prison first and then the killing field, so you can kind of see in order of what happened. Um, but do be warned, it is upsetting. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.